Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video and I hope you are all doing well. Now, as you guys have seen by the title, in today's video, we have a week in the life of an airline pilot. I knew this would be a video that I assume a lot of you would want to see, especially for those aspiring pilots or just people who are curious. But I'm essentially gonna show you what I get up to in a standard week as an airline pilot. That being said, a new airline pilot currently going through line training. So maybe a tiny bit different to what every other airline pilot is doing. Now it's currently Monday morning and I'm gonna be basically filming this whole week to the best of my ability uh, all the way up to Sunday and uh, my roster's looking a bit crazy this week. Now line training is a very dynamic process to say the least. Line training is essentially the training that new pilots to an airline have to do to assure they are ready to fly with all the other pilots and perform standard operating procedures essentially. But for your first job, you do a lot of flights at the beginning with a line training captain, just to make sure you're ready to fly no matter what the scenario. Now, when I woke up this morning, I was supposed to be flying Tuesday, Wednesday, then I had two days off, and then Saturday and Sunday. However, two hours ago, I got a message saying that has changed. And now I'm scheduled to fly all six of the days, including the Thursday and Friday. Now that's a lot of flying. And for me, that is exactly what I want. The more I'm flying, the happier I am. So hopefully the more the better. But line training being a very dynamic process, that could all change very quickly. So just to keep you guys updated, it's currently Monday, nice rest day today. And then I'm supposed to be flying every day for the rest of the week. Whether that will happen or not, things happen in aviation, stuff changes, so we're gonna have to wait and see. So I'm gonna bring you guys along with me and uh, give you a little update each day to tell you what I've been doing. But to start off today, basically my aim is to plan for the whole week. So to start off, we need food. Once I am back from flying, I'm normally so tired. I really can't be bothered to go out and I just wanna relax and chill. And I'm so exhausted that food just really isn't on my mind. So I'm gonna to head to the supermarket this morning. I'm gonna try meal prep this whole week just so I'm fully ready to eat, take my lunches on my flights and not have to worry about any of that. As well as that, of course, I need to pack for the whole week, bring enough clothes and other stuff, a uniform, enough shirts, make sure they're all ironed and stuff. So I'll get that all done today to pretty much try and make this week as easy as I can for myself. Try get everything done possible. Just so this week when I am flying, I've got less to think about and I can just concentrate on the flying itself. But yeah, that's sort of how I think about my week. Try get as much planned as possible. So that's going to be the aim now. So I'm going to head to the supermarket, go meal prep, get some food. Let's get into it and hopefully this is going to be a really enjoyable week. So guys, just to give you a quick update, uh, a couple of hours ago, I got a message that my roster had changed. So this is what I'm talking about, how line training, how your roster is always changing. But so my flight on Friday has now been cancelled. I don't know if it was the captain couldn't wasn't available or didn't have hours or the aircraft was unavailable. I have no idea. I mean, the, the actual scheduled flight will still go ahead. I just won't be doing it. So I got taken off of that. So one less flight to do this week, which is nice to get a little break in between all the flights. But again, the more flights I'm doing, the better for me. So a bit annoying, but not the end of the world. It was only two sectors. Good morning, guys. It's currently about 3.30 in the morning. I just got up, had a shower. Last night, just finished my preparation, went straight to bed. Uh, nothing too much to update you on. But yeah, this morning we've got that early flight to Buritz. Um, report time's 5.25, but that means at the aircraft. So have to get there a bit earlier, go through security and stuff like that. And I finished my preparation this morning, have a look at the weather, updated no tams and stuff like that, make sure there's nothing too significant affecting us. But yeah, this morning just had a quick cup of coffee. I'm not, I never get really too hungry this time in the morning. So I try to eat something cause that's better than nothing. So a couple of boiled eggs in the morning. But uh, yeah, I've got a lot of food to take with me, which is the main thing. I'm gonna finish my preparation now and then uh, time to head to the airport for my first flight of the week. So guys, just in the car now, ready to head to the airport. And uh, it's looking to be a really good day. Weather's looking lovely, nothing too complicated. So yeah, it's gonna be a good day, I think. But now time to head to the airport and uh, yeah, get this going. So guys, just arrived to the aircraft, uh, had a quick chat with the captain. Weather's looking great for today. And uh, yeah, we just have a quick briefing of how the day's gonna go. So I'm flying the leg there and then he'll be flying the leg back. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a really good day. So I'm gonna go now do this flight and I'll catch up with you after. So guys, I am finally back home after what has been probably the craziest day of my 
pilot career so far. So let me tell you a bit about it. We started the day off as normal, flying to Barit in France and back. We did the whole flight both on time and everything was great. Finished by about 11 p.m. I'm all ready to go home. So myself and the captain refresh our, essentially our apps that we use when we're flying. And we see for both of us that two additional flights have been added somewhere in France again and then coming back and we're sort of confused because none of the cabin crew have had this so we're then thinking okay are we now flying an extra two flights uh with a different cabin crew so we weren't really sure what was happening anyway we waited about 10 minutes to get an update and next thing we know we are flying an a320 just us two with one engineer on board flying them down to france where there is another plane which has need maintenance but we don't have any uh, maintenance staff at the airport it was at because it was such a remote airport so we essentially flew the plane down there in the 25 minute turnaround the engineer fixed the other plane then hopped back on our plane to come all the way back to Sandston. it made this a really long day really tiring but to be honest I got an extra two sectors out of it, so I'm not really too bothered. Yeah, I am really tired now, and we do have to do another flight tomorrow, so I'm going to get, you know, a little bit of less chill time for that, but still not the end of the world. I'd, I'd rather be doing the flying, and I'm happy I got the extra two flights. So, all in all, a really long day. The flights to Baritz and back. The weather today was just beautiful all around. Uh, just those extra two flights were a big surprise, but um, nothing I couldn't handle. Plan of action is definitely to relax for a bit i'm just going to put my feet up watch some youtube and chill then probably again prepare for tomorrow make sure we are fully ready to go for my flight i believe i'm going rome tomorrow so that should be a good fun flight so make sure i'm all fully prepared for that and then of course eat some food i am absolutely starving so that will be the plan of action for the rest of today so uh yeah we'll see what the day holds so guys just a quick update after we finish off day one here um pretty much just chilled most of the evening made my food and prepared my lunch and stuff for tomorrow looked over some stuff for the flight tomorrow some discussion items that we might go over in the cruise just really needed to rest to be honest but now gonna go to sleep get a good night's sleep really need it and then it will be time to head to the airport tomorrow morning for a lovely flight to italy so time to head to sleep and uh, i'll catch you in the morning so guys just arrived at the airport for day number two two are flying in day number three of the week as i said last night standard day today we're just doing uh rome and back which uh, should be a pretty easy flight hopefully no dramas or anything finish nice and early fingers crossed no delays weather for the day as well is looking really good both here in london and in rome and uh the whole way on route we, we shouldn't really have any troubles or anything so should be a fairly standard day for myself. Um, now, I'm not sure what leg I'm doing because that's something I discuss with the captain once I meet him and, and we have a little chat about it. And we have a general chat about how the day is going. So I'm going to head into the crew room now. It's a small walk from here, but same as yesterday, I'm going to go do that and then I will give you the whole debrief after the flight and tell you how it all went. So guys, back home now after another great day of flying. So we went to Rome and back and not Rome, the international airport. There's another small airport just south of the city centre called uh, Ciampino, which is the airport in Rome that we fly to. This airport was insane. So I was pilot flying on the way down and on the final approach, I have never seen anything like it. You're basically flying right over over the city center i had the best view i think in the world of the coliseum because i'm sitting on the right hand seat and the coliseum was pretty much dead there off to my right and you just couldn't miss it, it i mean rome is so beautiful and i've never actually been in person but having done that flight today and having done that approach i now think if i have a few days off it's definitely somewhere on the bucket list that i want to go but honestly an absolutely beautiful flight there really smooth flying conditions the whole way cav okay at the airport very light winds headed straight back and um again another smooth flight as pilot monitoring um, as general days go um this really wasn't one where i can complain got a big day tomorrow though so we're going to Rhodes and back in greece that's four hours there four hours back good for me because it's lots of flight time but it's going to be a long day for sure but i am really looking forward to it i i know it's got a beautiful approach right pretty much right over the sea it's obviously just a greek island and it looks amazing so really excited for that one but okay again with all my flights the day before i'm trying to do as much planning as i can so when i'm waking up really early in the morning there's not a lot more i have to do of course i don't get issued my flight plan to the day of the flight so 
I can't really do everything in advance, the majority of it, you know, you can expect what weather you're going to get and you can do as much planning as you can the, the day before and so you're ready. I am going to relax for a bit, I've just been out for lunch but back home now. Yeah, Rose tomorrow, looking forward to it, going to relax, get my preparation done. I will see you either later or tomorrow. So guys, good morning, just arrived at the airport for day three of flying, day four of the week and um, it's absolutely pouring absolutely pouring and i've got a 10 minute walk to security so uh i'm gonna get soaked i'm really not looking forward to it i think i have an umbrella in the car i really hope i do because otherwise if not i'm getting soaked but standard morning this morning obviously i don't really want to record because there's other people sleeping in the house and i don't want to wake them or anything but um tomorrow i've got a day off as i already mentioned and in that i'm going to give you a proper rundown of how i prepare for my different flights um as i've got the day off i thought i might as well record and give you some more detail about that because i haven't really been going too much into detail about how i prepare for the flight so yeah this morning was simply standard morning routine followed by um preparation for the flight to rose today in greece uh yeah the weather over there looks beautiful i wish i could stay but uh no we're here in the pouring rain so yeah did my preparation this morning and i'll go more into detail about that tomorrow but uh on my day off now time to walk to security in the pouring rain this is going to be interesting fingers crossed i have an umbrella so guys really really good day today just finished uh back in the car now and um yeah gonna head home and i'll give you a debrief there so guys it's currently the next day and i was a bit busy last night so i forgot to record completely about my flight yesterday but I'm ready now and I will uh, give you a full debrief of how the day went. To be honest, really good flight. It was a very long day. Um, so we flew to Rhodes, which is in Greece, and it's a long four-hour flight there and back, which is good and bad for a couple of reasons. Good this part is, hour building for me, it, there's loads of hours there, you know, eight hours of flying total. So really good for my hour building. Also, Greece is lovely. The weather there was insane. The views as we descended in on the approach are unbelievable and the only bad part about it is on a longer day like that when you're doing eight hours of flying you could split that up into four flights which just gives you a bit more action as a pilot more takeoffs more landings and uh, more sectors which is good for line training as i have to do 66 total minimum for line training so by doing more sectors we tick it off but that being said i'd rather do the two long ones and not fly at all but if i could have done four sectors that would have been a better option all in all a really good day i was pilot monitoring on the way down and then pilot flying on the way back R really happy with my landing as well uh, a really good one so made me really happy because always makes me feel good when i get to do a good landing it doesn't happen every time you know i'm still trying to perfect it believe it or not my first ever landing on the airbus with passengers was still to date my best ever landing now as i mentioned before it is the next day so we are currently on day five of the week so Friday, and it is my day off today. Chilling this morning and uh, really relaxed. Loving the day. Uh, got to sleep in. I had 11 hours sleep, believe it or not, which uh, was very much needed after a lot of earlies. Firstly, I'm going to go over just in a second about how I prepare for each day. And I'm going to show you that in a lot more detail so you guys can understand that. So when I go every day, so I prepare for my flight in the morning, you have an idea of what I've actually done. I'm now on late, which I definitely prefer. I always feel like... I don't get enough sleep if I'm on earlies. Even though I try to go to bed super early, I always feel like I don't get enough sleep. So yeah, good thing when late is, get a good lie in and still plenty of time. I'll give you a quick briefing, I guess now, of uh, how I prepare for a flight. Also, one other thing I do on my day off when I tend to, which I forgot to mention, is my logbook. So I'm gonna quickly fill out this logbook and then yeah, I'll tell you guys how I prepare for my flights. So guys, preparing for a flight, how do I do it? There's a few things you have to go over. It's not that easy. It takes a fair bit of time and uh, especially on the early morning flights, I try to do as much as I can the night before so that the morning I get up, there's not too much left to do. And of course, on the afternoon slash evening flights, you've got a lot more time, so it's a lot easier to get it all done. But uh, try to get as much done as I can the night before, especially for the morning flights. So the night before, there's a few things we can check. Firstly, weather. We can look at the TAF for the time we're going to be flying and take the expected weather for the flight. And once we have that, there's a few things we need to consider. And I make sure I double check that nothing's changed this following day, just to make sure that there's nothing too drastic of a change that would affect the flight. Firstly, the weather of the airfield we're taking off and landing in. Just got to make sure that the ceiling of the cloud base isn't too low. And of course, the visibility is good enough for the flight. Once that's all done, we've got to do it for the alternate as well we got to make sure 
for an alternate it has to be certain conditions depending on the approach in use say it's an ils approach for this big airport and the minimum is 200 feet above the aerodrome elevation then we could use more restrictive minima than if say the only approach was a vor or an rmp approach where the minimum was slightly higher then you would have to have slightly better weather conditions to allow that airport to be considered as an alternate so these are all things i'm checking i'm looking at the airport seeing what approaches it has for all my alternates then deciding what weather minimum is required for that airport and then checking the TAFs and saying is the weather good enough for that airport so weather's all ticked off we've looked at the takeoff airport we've looked at the destination as well as a few en route alternates and destination alternates once that's all done and that's considered we can move on from that and next up i'm checking the aircraft starting off with any mail items so minimum equipment list we check that nothing on there as well as no oebs if there are any not a big deal just got to make note of them and apply them if they are performance if they affect the performance of the aircraft then i'll take that into account but just making sure it's all okay next up we can do dispatch landing calculations so we can take that expected weather we got and we can knowing the aircraft we have the expected weights we're going to be using or what i tend to do is just give it a 10 knot tailwind and take the weather conditions we expect but with the 10 knot tailwind on the runway in use that i expect to use for the day and uh, at maximum landing weight and if we can land in those conditions we know almost no matter what the conditions are on the actual day we're going to be more than fine to land it no matter what the conditions are so preliminary dispatch landing calculations need to be done before every flight for the landing airports at on both flights so normally the takeoff and landing airport because you're going to be returning to where you started as well as the alternates for both of those so performance is all done we're good to go we can land at all the airports which is really important once that's ticked off i'm looking at the no tams and i'm checking these for again takeoff and landing airports as well as alternates making sure and highlighting there's if there's anything that will affect off it it could be anything from a closed taxiway to an ils that's unserviceable runways in use that are unserviceable if it's an airport with multiple runways gives us a better idea of what runway to expect also a lot of airports around europe are always having work done to the runways so maybe in the evenings if you're flying late at night the runway might be a reduced length which per case that affects what approach you're doing and maybe how you're going to land and what auto brake you're going to use you might need to take a, a larger auto brake always good to have all of this worked out and planned so that on the actual day you've got less to worry about i always say that the better you're planned the easier day you're going to have it, and that's all it comes down to the more planned you are the less unexpected things can happen so it's really important to have a really good plan but yeah no tams all ticked off you've gone through those in detail but everyone highlight the important ones as well and then i'm looking at the airport briefing especially in a lot more detail if it's a newer airport and this is something that the company i work for published for each airport and it is a detailed guide of tips and tricks and th important information to know for each airport so i give that a good read make sure everything that is really important and going to affect me taking that all into account and then once you've read that you'll also have a very good idea of the threats for that airport so i make a list of all the threats for the airport we're flying to and as we brief and do our approach briefing in the air the threats are a topic we will discuss so i make sure that for each airport i have a couple of threats in my head but most importantly how we're going to mitigate those threats during the flight so for example if we know we're flying into London Stansted, which is an airport I fly a lot into. We know there's a lot of congested airspace. So on the departure or on the approach when we're coming in, we know there's lots of congested traffic. We really don't want to be climbing out, say, of Stansted at 5,000 feet a minute because you're going to set off TCAS and that's just not good for the planes around you. You don't want to be giving those alerts. So to minimize that, when we're in the last... 2000 feet we can set our vertical speed to 1500 feet per minute when we level off that way we're more likely to avoid a tcas alert and just these things that we can do just to minimize all of those threats but again threats can be different for every airport and we've just got to make sure we've taken them all into consideration and threats aren't necessarily for the airport if it's a late shift and it's your fifth day of work on you being tired could be a threat and it is more than okay to say that as a threat out loud in the briefing go look it's my fifth day on i'm tired we're late at night now it's our fourth sector today that's a threat and that's a really important threat to announce as well if we think that's a threat but there's not really something i take into consideration while planning while planning i'm more thinking about the airport itself
And then once I do have the flight plan, which is normally released in the morning, so I can't do that, I'll always basically take all the information I've gathered the night before, checking weather, the aircraft, the NOTAMs, the threats for the airport, if it's congested airspace, if I'm thinking I'm holding it a runway for a long time because, you know, we've got a slot time and it's later than we expect. All of this stuff, I take that into account, look at the flight plan for the fuel I want to take for the flight. The captains are a lot more experienced than me when it comes to fuel consideration. But I always like to have a figure in my head because the captain will always ask me, Ollie, how much fuel do you want to take? So it's always good for me to have a number and I'll try and make that number as good as I can. If I do want to take more fuel, obviously I need a reason to justify it. You can't just fill the plane up for the sake of it because obviously the more fuel you take, the heavier you are, so the more fuel you're going to burn in flight. Increase the cost, worse for the environment, just bad all around. So try and minimise the fuel we take, but at the same time, we have a minimum which is given up to us on the flight plan, and that's a very minimum we can take. There could be a number of reasons for taking extra fuel. It could be delay on departure because you have a slot time. It could be weather. It could be a no tan. For example, if there's an, an airport which normally has two runways, but one of the runways is closed, you know there's going to be a lot more congestion as there's only single runway operation with the same amount of planes. You can understand how that can be a problem. More likely to hold, so you might take half an hour holding fuel just in case. All of these things you're taking into consideration for the flight and for how much fuel you're going to take. Now, I don't think I missed anything. I'm pretty sure that's it and quite a lot of detail. So you guys now have a good idea of what we think about on the flight. Pretty sure I didn't miss anything. If I did, let me know what else you're planning down in the comments below before your flights. But I might have missed something, but I'm pretty sure that ticked off everything. Weather, aircraft, performance, no tamps, airfield briefing and threats included in that. And a fuel prediction of how much fuel I want to take. Pretty sure that's everything to cover. And that does take a bit of time. It, it's not a five minute job or a ten minute job. It can take upwards of half an hour to an hour. Just to, especially if it's a new airport. I really like to have a good idea. But it's better to do as much planning as possible. So you're ready for the day of flying. But yeah, that is pretty much how I prepare for a flight. Plan for the rest of the day. I'm going to relax. It's my off day. Watch some Netflix. No planning today because I'm on the late flight tomorrow. Uh, Check-in is I think about 4pm. So really late one. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to chill, watch some Netflix. So I'm going to do all my planning in the morning. I've got more than enough time. So yeah, nice relaxing day today. Ease myself into it, and uh, I need a break. So just just relax the brain for a day. And tomorrow back to it. Really good day. So nice long three hour flights there. Three hour flight back to Otterpenny. Should be good. So uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to day six of this week in the life of an airline pilot. Now, the thing with line training is we don't have a fixed roster. Now, to be honest, most airlines, I'd say in the world, it definitely in Europe, do not have a fixed roster. You get your roster a month in advance, and that, that is your roster for the following month. So very hard to plan. The great thing about my airline is, is we do have a fixed roster. It's five on four off and that's a pretty much as good of a roster as you can get the only thing is we don't get that until the end of line training so during this line training period due to the availability of line training instructors and the fact that they just want to get us through it as quickly as possible it's very unlikely to have a five on four off they just can't do it so they just give us a random roster and uh but i'm completely fine with that to be honest but it just means i have these days so normally on my if, when it will be five on four off it'll go five early's and then four days off and then five lates and the hard part is is now transitioning because i've just been on three early's i've had a day off and now i'm going to lates which isn't too bad if it was from lates to early's that would be a bit more of a problem but to be honest it's more than fine to go from early's to lates but that's the thing today and that's what we're doing this weekend we've got two lates this weekend so today my check-in isn't until 3 45 which very late in the afternoon we're not getting back until i think midnight so yeah it's going to be a little bit of a late one today but that's the plan anyway so this morning i woke up i did all that preparation that i talked about yesterday and talked about on my day off all that preparation for my flight i did that and i ticked it all off and i probably say in my personal opinion everyone's different but i actually prefer the late flights i like waking up a bit later doing all my preparation the day of in the morning and then heading in we're going to Bucharest, so uh, yeah, it's an airport I've flown to before. It's pretty pretty standard airport, two runways. Um, it's pretty big, but not nothing crazy, nothing unexpected. The airspace is pretty quiet over there, so yeah, it should should be no problems. Weather's looking great as well, so 
yeah, should be, should be a good decent flight there and back hopefully not too delayed uh, because we have to have minimum rest between our two flights and I think I have about 13 and a half hours between my two flights however if we're an hour and a half delayed for whatever reason that becomes less than 12 hours I'm not able to do my flights the next day so fingers crossed that doesn't happen because of course I want to fly as much as possible we've got four sectors tomorrow so that's great for my training and I want to get them all done so fingers crossed we're not too delayed we get there on time and uh we're able to do the flights tomorrow. Pretty much just chilling now this morning until 3.45 with all the preparation done. I'll have a quick look over everything just before I head to the airport, make sure nothing's changed, but shouldn't do too much. Uh, weather's looking cav okay pretty much everywhere. So I think we're all gonna be fine, but that's the plan. So uh, yeah, relax now till 3.45 and I'll see you later. So guys, just arrived, time to have a quick walk to security, head through there, then head to the crew room where basically if we're not the first flight of the day, we meet in the crew room. And if we are the first flight of the day, we meet the aircraft. But as a, obviously this is an afternoon flight, so we're not the first flight of the day. Aircraft won't be there yet. So head to the crew room uh, to meet the rest of the crew. And then uh, yeah, head to the aircraft when it's time. So guys, just got back in the car after a really, really good day out. Probably my best performance to date, which is I'm something I'm really proud of. Did really well today, so uh, I'll give you a full debrief tomorrow when I wake up in the morning. So guys, welcome to day seven of this week in the life of an airline pilot. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, remember to subscribe and like, and uh, yeah, and I'll try and make sure I can produce more of this type of content. But yesterday went really, really well. I was super happy with it. I pretty much had no feedback after the flight, which as a whole is pretty amazing because... I'm only 34 flights now through my line training, which is a total of 66. So to have no feedback after a flight only halfway through the training is puts me in a really good spot. So I was really happy to hear that. But yeah, the flight, I flew it down there. Really happy with how I flew. Really good approach, really good landing. Overall, just really happy with how it all went. And on the flight back, pilot monitoring, pretty i've pretty much got the hang of the pilot monitoring roles I, I think i really understand it but yeah also i definitely prefer these evening flights i feel so much more awake i just don't think i'm a morning person pretty much but yeah when it's these evening flights i feel like i perform a lot better and uh, i'm a, a lot more alert and awake but today we have four sectors uh we are doing pisa and back in italy and then a uh, baritz in france and back so four sectors today should be a good one. Yeah, set, flying with the same captain as yesterday. Really nice guy, which is always good. To be honest, I haven't really met any bad captains at this airline, which is something I'm also really happy about. Because uh, you hear some horror stories out there at some airlines, but I haven't heard anything at this one. So really happy about that as well. Still haven't done my preparation and I'm slowly running out of time. So that's what I'm going to be getting on with today. Now, in the near future, I don't know whether the video will be released before this one or after, but if it's not released yet, stay tuned for it. And if it is released, I'll leave a link down below. But I want to do a more detailed day in the life of a pilot. Now, it's hard because I can't really record whilst I'm on duty. So I don't know if I just sort of create some cinematic video and put that over the top of me talking and explaining. I might do that. Let me know if that's something you'll like, but that is a plan. I want to do a more detailed day in the life of an airline pilot so you guys can really find out what I get up to actually at work. But yeah, so now, same as always, I've made my food for today and uh, time to prepare for the flight. Once I'm all prepared, time to head to the airport and get going. But yeah, should be a good one. So guys, a final day completed. It was a really good four sector day. Now, I can't remember what airports I told you before, but I'm pretty sure I got them completely wrong. So in the end, I ended up going to Portiers in France and then Bologna in Italy. I'm pretty sure I said France and Italy, but just not the right airports. But that was what happened in the end. I was pilot flying for the middle two sectors. So I took it back from Portiers into Stansted and then I took it to Bologna. And something I found out, and maybe you guys know this already, but I didn't know this, is that in Bologna... They have a follow me car, which is a Lamborghini. I mean, I couldn't believe it, but that is so cool. We didn't get to see it. It wasn't in use the day we went and we had a different follow me car, just a normal 4x4 or something. But that is now a bucket list requirement for me is to be followed in by that Lamborghini. I think that would be so cool. I didn't even know that was a thing. To be honest, the four sectors were pretty good and pretty simple. Nothing to mention. Um couple things to work on but 
nothing major, nothing dangerous or anything, but all in all, really good flight. I definitely prefer the late and uh, really good that. Obviously, it's now Monday, so the day after I was flying, but this week, for the rest of the week, I'm on the lakes for, for five days again, so a lot more flying, and uh, yeah, on the lakes is definitely a good thing for me. And I definitely prefer flying conditions in the evening. The air is a lot smoother, and yeah, I just enjoy flying in the evenings. It really does make it fun. And also sunsets is another thing I want to mention. Just it, night flying in general is just amazing. I definitely prefer it. Let me know if you guys have done any night flights as pilots and uh, what you thought of them as well. And let me know if you prefer day flying or night flying. For me, I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards a night, I have to say. But guys, that does bring us to the end of the video. And I really do hope you enjoyed. If you did, remember to like and subscribe. And also, check out this video here. It's a week in the life of a student pilot back when I was doing my training. So if you like this one, you'll definitely like that one. Uh, but yeah, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.